welcome to the series of C-Sharp 2005 Express Edition. This is lesson one. We're going to be talking about uh, using a pop-up window in this lesson. So what we're going to do is, uh, first things first, this is from ASP Team Express. First things first is we're going to minimize this. We're going to open up C-Sharp 2005 Express Edition. Usually it's on your desktop. When you install a program, it usually makes creates a shortcut on your desktop. If it does not, you'll find it in your start uh in the program files under Visual Studio 2005. Okay, so we're going to double click and open it. We're going to run the program. Now, first things first is we're going to create a new project. Let's just call it uh using pop up window. Okay. We're going to make sure that we click here on Windows application cuz we're going to be making a Windows application. So, what we're going to do is click okay. It's going to compile and it's going to open up uh, our platform. Now using our platform is quite easy and uh, could look tricky for beginners so I'm just going to describe it really quick. So on the side here when you first look at it you have your file, your edit, like any any, any Windows um, Microsoft uh, program they always give you the toolbar on the top here and uh, you can create new projects quickly, open files, close and whatnot and uh, projects add a new item to our project, add a class, and we'll be getting to these uh, adding data sources when creating databases. We're going to get through all these in our lessons, uh, and I'm going to describe all these uh, very good. Uh, also, we have our quick shortcuts. Uh, we could use our quick shortcuts here when adding. You can also right click and change the layout. You could get rid of a layout to make some room or add a layout uh, or add any type of toolbar that you wish here. We're going to get rid of that. Okay. You also have your toolbox on the left hand side. Now does it have to be on the left hand side? No. You could easily move it to wherever you wish on the page. Now if you see here that we have a couple of uh, automatic positions that we could put it at to make it uh, stay at that certain position. So I'm just going to go here and put it wait till it highlights and release it and it goes back to our left side. Now that can be done for any window that we wish. If you can see here any window in any position that we wish to put it we're just going to use the default positions and uh, put everything back to where it was. Okay. Let's just put that back over here. There we go. Okay. Now you can also see that we have the option to pin down and auto hide our toolbox. Here you can see that we have a lot of space now to work on our project. Uh, if we want our toolbox to be visual because we're going to be using a lot of tools we're going to want to keep it instead of always picking and dragging picking and dragging picking and dragging we're going to want it to stay so if we don't pick it's going to auto hide so what we're going to do is you can see here a little pin which says auto hide we're going to click it and that way it pins down and stays on the left hand side so we can easily drag and drop any button or any control that we wish to use that's the same with the solution explorer now Solution Explorer basically it's quick quick access between pages between the design phase and the programming uh, programming uh, window so what we can do is pin it down as well and uh, you can see here that it has the name of our project and all the subfolders inside of it we could easily double click and uh, we can get some properties here about our about our form that we are creating very cool so I'm just gonna go back on here gonna let that auto hide and we're gonna let the other one auto hide too. I'm just gonna let them auto hide. Okay. So basically in this lesson is what I want to teach you is how to use the message box uh, under using a button. So what I'm gonna first do is drag and drop a button. Now with that button you might ask in the older versions that we're gonna have to change the properties of that button, the name ID of it, uh, as well as the text, visual text of it, because we're not gonna want to leave button one. You can also change the size very easily by uh, by right here putting your mouse over top of these little square dots these little white dots and uh, you can change the size to your liking we're just going to leave it right here at that size so how are we going to change we're going to make sure that we click on the button one and we're going to go to properties now we're going to pin it down because we're going to make some changes to it and we're going to first change the ID of the button As you can see here under data binding uh, underneath data binding here uh, we're not going to do it we're going to make sure that the ID, which has name here, we're going to make sure that the ID of the button, we're going to change it. We're going to change it to name button. Actually, we're going to change it to print button. 
because we're going to be printing out of it. Okay, and we're going to have to remember that ID when calling it when writing code. So we're going to change the text of the visual text of button one. We're going to change that to uh, print. Okay, very good. Now we can also change the size if we wished, or we could change uh, the four the four color, or as well as the background color. You can see these options right here. We can change the background color or, or add an image as well. That's very cool. So let's just change the background color to let's say a custom color. Uh, let's just say we want to change it to uh, light blue. Okay, and okay, and you can see that we changed it right there. We can also change the font visually here. We could change it to uh, right here. We could select it uh, right here triple dots and uh, it's going to open up us a window here we could change the size as well as boldness or the type of fonts okay even put an effect through it we're going to click OK we're going to change the size a bit okay that's perfect now once we're done with using our property very quick and easy we're going to want to auto hide it again so I'm just going to click right here and auto hide it so now that we have our button that says print in the middle of our form one we're going to write some code in the background in coding, we're going to call it, we, when we double click on it, we're going to see the event handler of our code when someone clicks that button. So in the event, we're going to want to, what we said that we wanted to do was print out a name uh, when someone clicks on it into another window. So how are we going to use that pop-up window? Well, we're going to want to, there's a code called message box dot, and there's a show okay show is a method you can see here when they give you a little square pink box here that's a method so we're gonna click on show and we're gonna write inside of it a string now you can see here that's a dialog result message box dot show and it tells you that you have to enter a string text so this is very helpful for Microsoft that gives you tips and uh, helps you know that you don't make any errors so what we're gonna write we're gonna write a name inside let's write John Smith Okay, and we're going to have to close that string as well as the bracket. And then every end of uh, C sharp code, uh, we're going to have to write a semicolon. Okay, so let's save this. And let's go back to our design using our tab button on the top. We could switch back and forth. Under our tab button, let's run it and see what happens. So we start debugging. And you can see here that it popped out a window. Now that's very handy. From this window, we could click print. And you can see here that printed out our name, John Smith, on a separate window. And we cannot switch this window until we press OK and close that window. Now, you might ask, how do we run it outside of uh, the C Sharp Express Edition uh, platform? Well, that's very easy. What we're going to do is we're going to close it. It's going to ask us to save. We're going to save it, and we're going we're gonna to pick a spot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the whole folder name. And under C, I'm going to put it under Project C Sharp. Okay? And we're going to have to remember our solution name. So what we're going to do is we're going to save it. It's going to close down. We're going to go to start. We're going to go to our my computer. And uh, under C, we should have project C sharp. Now we're going to open that using our pop-up window uh, folder. We're going to open it and we're going to find uh, another directory. In that directory, we're going to also open up our using pop-up window. And once we've saved our program, the most important out of all these is the bin bin file where under our bin under our debug we're going to come up with three application files now under these application files our most important one is uh, this one right here that uh, does not have a dot but it is a dot exe file uh, and we're going to double click on it and you can see that it ran our program outside of our platform so what we can do is does it run of course it runs there you can see that printed out John Smith you could save it take it with you anywhere and show off to your friends okay Thank you. I hope to see you in lesson two.